Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's Elisa Ruffin with Leading Educators, and you are on the Grade 11 Unit 6 Video Lesson Series. We are headed into Lesson 27 from Week 6, and I hope you are ready for today. A brief recap of what you've accomplished so far. In Day 1, you read the first part of The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe, did a first read, annotations, and some predictions regarding the end of the story. Next, you did the back half of the story and completed it, compared your predictions to what actually happened, and answered some questions and did some reviewing and additional annotating. Today, we're going to head into our close read of the text. And you know that that's the part where we really dig deep, do some annotating from a different point of view. And you're also going to engage in a different type of summary activity um, that's connected to ranking events in the story. And so I will make sure that I walk through that and model that for you. You'll know exactly what's expected. Before we get into the activities for today, though, just a brief reminder that whenever you're done with the activities listed here for today, that you share your learning with a family member, caregiver, or friend, you complete the weekly fluency activity using a page from the text, and you do some additional reading from a text of your choice for at least 20 minutes. Our next order of business is our riddle of the day, aka our Rebus puzzle for the day this week. And I hope you are ready for it. Make sure that you gather, gather, gather those around you who are a part of things with you typically, or if you like an individual challenge, that you get yourself ready to go. Are you ready? Because here it comes. The image for today is as follows. All right, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to pause the video if you need some additional time to either think and or discuss and debate what you believe the meaning of this Rebus puzzle is. The answer, read between the lines. Read between the lines. Now, I think that this is definitely a relevant Rebus for today, considering that we're headed into the close read, right? And so as you know, because we've done close reads several times um, at this point, it really is reading between the lines. It's not necessarily what the author explicitly says or says directly, but sometimes it what, it's what he hints at or insinuates, right? Infers. That's what reading between the lines means. So a brief preview of what's to come today connected to a Rebus puzzle. Now let's head in to make sure that we have our resources. We need the Telltale Heart text. You need your learning packet week six, lesson 27, note catcher, pen or pencil, and mobile device is optional if you want to access the text digitally. A recap that we're reading a fictional text short story by Edgar Allan Poe, again, aficionado on Gothic literature, Gothic literature focused on those kind of dark um, horror type stories. And that we're also keeping in mind and in the forefront of our thinking, what do stories reveal about the human condition? That's our unit essential question. And then this text guiding question, what sinister parts of the human condition reveal are revealed um, in the telltale heart. Now we talked about the word sinister at this point, so you should have a really good grasp on what it means, not just because you've looked it up and come up with synonyms, but because you all have an impression of the text as well. Our learning targets for today have shifted. Um, I can read and summarize the background and plot of the telltale heart. I can record my ideas and questions about the characters and events as I read the story, and your annotations are going to take a little bit of a different angle on your learning targets. Remember, we do our read, think, talk, write routine here, and you close with a wrap-up activity. Uh, you're going to, again, read the Telltale Heart more closely this time, annotating, focusing on the following things. You're circling descriptive words or phrases that paint a picture of characters' thoughts or feelings. You're going to draw quotation marks, in the margins beside any dialogue and write down any thoughts or questions that you have about the author's word choice, tone, etc. And we'll look at those um, in depth as I quick model a close read for this text. Today, um, you will also talk with a family member, caregiver, or friend about the following questions. What feelings or emotions did you feel while you read through the text the first time? Make sure you provide specific examples. So you're going to get in touch with the feelings that this text brought up in you. And then you're going to, in your right section, do something that I like to call literary dominoes. And I will unpack that step by step so you don't have to worry about what that even means. Uh, the right section writes it out for you step by step, but I will clarify. And then in closing, you're going to take the events that you identify from the right section there and think about which event in the entire story you think is the most pivotal to the plot. 
Before you jump into that though, let's start with a quick model. Remembering that you are going to be circling descriptive words or phrases that paint a picture of the character's thoughts or feelings. You're drawing quotation marks in the margins alongside any dialogue between characters and describing your observations about the tone of the conversation. And write down any questions you have about the author's word choice, tone, or portrayal of the characters. Now that we know what's expected of us, let's jump into the text. We are going to go back to the first paragraph of the text, which is always helpful to do. We've done a first read of the same passage. This time we're only going to take on the first paragraph. So you're going to have one layer of annotations already present based on what we've done together so far. Now you're going to add an additional layer. And this really does, I think, illustrate the idea of the different ways in which each phase of the reading process changes over time based on what you're focusing on. So we've read through this already. And because we've read through the text already, we're just going to jump into our annotations. I want to draw your attention to several words here that I've circled. Okay, nervous, dreadfully nervous, mad and haunted. The reason why I've circled these words in particular is because when they come together, the sum total of all these words paint a picture of a man mentally on edge and not fully in control of his mind or emotion. Right. So remember, we're circling descriptive words or phrases and all of these words are very descriptive, nervous, dreadfully nervous, mad. Mad in this sense doesn't mean angry. It actually means crazy. And this idea of being haunted, if I bring all those descriptive words together and they're compacted in this paragraph, it leaves me with a very distinct impression there. And so it's definitely descriptive and worthy of circling. The next thing I'm doing is I'm putting a set of quotation marks um, at the beginning of uh, this story in this particular paragraph. Now, while there isn't any dialogue happening between the narrator and an additional character, and I know that that's what the annotation calls for, I put it here because there does seem to be a dialogue going on between the narrator and the reader. There's almost this sense that the narrator is directly talking to me as a reader or you as a reader. And the overall feeling I get from that is that I'm being drawn into the story almost as if I'm a witness to what's happening here. And I have to believe that that's not an accident by way of the author. So that's why I put quotation marks there because it's worthy of identifying and making a distinction about and thinking about this idea of what is dialogue actually? Is it only dialogue within characters in the story or can a narrator really be in dialogue with a reader? Um, so that's something to think about and that's why I put it there because it's something to think about. All right, and something to revisit later. So now we are um, already thinking through the overall tone of uh, the piece as well. And some of that tone we've already gleaned from the impression. And it seems here that there's desperation, a lot of it, um, and that overall sense. So the tone there, based on the sum total of the words, again, again um, is definitely giving me an impression of um, someone being on the edge, someone being desperate, someone being out of control. Now that I have modeled the first read, it is your turn to go through the text again. We're going to do it in phases, just like we did the first read. So you're going to do IL one through three, and you're going to do the annotation circle, draw and write there. Then you're going to move on to the talk section where you're going to discuss the feelings and emotions that came up for you um, as you read the text through the first time. And you've shared a summary by this time, hopefully with your family, your caregiver or friend, or at the very least shared your learning with them. They may have even been intrigued enough to read uh, the story with you. And I want you all to discuss what feelings and emotions come up um, as you engage with the plot. You are going to pause the video right now to complete that read think and talk, then you're going to come back and I will model for you um, the activities for the right section as well as the closing section for today. So go ahead and pause the video right here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I hope that the close read went well and that you were able to uncover some things and notice some things about the text that you didn't see the first time, that you had a really robust conversation with a family member, caregiver or friend about how you were feeling about the story overall. 
Now that you've got that behind you, let's go ahead and take a look at the right section for today. This is what I refer to as literary dominoes. So what does that even mean? Um, what I want you to think about is this idea of working backwards. And I want you to think about the idea of major events in the story. And put this picture in your mind. I don't know if you've ever seen a video of um, these elaborate domino setups where you have a person who lines up a whole bunch of dominoes in all sorts of configurations. Um, sometimes they're in multiple rooms and inevitably what it ends up doing is that there's some major thing at the end that the last domino ends up triggering. So the last domino can end up, you know, triggering a light switch going off or a bucket of water pouring on someone's head, whatever it is. Um, these series of dominoes are all set up in order to create a end, right? And so that's basically what you're going to do with the events in the story. But instead of starting with domino one that falls into domino two and inevitably ends up in the light switch going on or the bucket pouring out water, um, you're going to actually start from the end and work your way backwards so that you can really see how the sequence of events one leads to the other. So think about it this way. You're going to start with the light coming on and then go back to domino one. So in the case of this story, if I'm using the domino analogy, you're going to start with the very last event in the story, which is, you know, um, this character getting caught. And then you're going to work your way backwards from there, looking at the next immediate event that came prior to it. And then so on and so forth sequentially to see exactly what were the series of events that led to the inevitable end of the story. Right. So only five you need to focus on and five because there's only um, you can really get caught up in the minor events in the story where you look at all these little de details. I want you to focus on major events. Major events are essential to the plot line and they're not just minor details here. All right. So I want you to think about the five major events that happen in the story, work backwards from the end of the story and think about the event right before it that helped to make that happen. And then the event right before that that helped to make it happen. And you're going to do that to you basically come back to the beginning of the story. And that, my friends, is literary dominoes. Once you've done that, you're going to move on to the closing activity for today. And from the list that you've created in the right section, those five major events, I want you to think about which one is the most important event in the overall plot of the story. So you've already whittled down the events to five majors. Now you're going to take those five and whittle it down to what you think to be the most pivotal moment in the story. Meaning, if this event did not happen, then the story may not have ended the way that it did. All right? Use evidence from the text to support your point of view and create a really good argument there for why you think that event of the five that you created is the absolute most important. So now that you know how to approach those two activities, it is your turn to write basically engage in the literary dominoes activity by starting with the last event in the story and working backwards, identifying the five major events that led to the story's end. And then from that list you wrote down, identifying what you think is the most important event in the plot of the story and making sure that you explain and cite evidence from the text. Okay. If you need additional help or further explanation on how to engage in any of these activities, make sure that you pause and replay the video as many times as you need. Um, and then also, if you need some additional support, that you reach out to a teacher uh, via email using the information provided. And once you've successfully knocked these activities out of the park, as I know you will, make sure that you share your learning with a family member, friend, or caregiver, complete the weekly fluency activity using a page from the text, and do an additional 20 minutes of reading from a text of your choice, right? So this is a really good series of activities here, folks. You are ready and prepared to engage with them. Hopefully you find the dominoes activity interesting and it really gets you thinking and you can, you know, engage your family member, friend or caregiver in that domino activity as well as you really try to whittle down what are the five major events um, and which ones are the most important. And we will see you back here tomorrow so that we can continue our close read.